Hello beautiful internet family, Dan here from danstuber.tv and today I have my review on the miniest of Mavics, the Mavic Mini. And if you're new to the channel then make sure to subscribe and smash that notification bell as you will be updated on all of my latest videos and if you're new here we're all about brutally honest tech reviews and in today's episode I'll be breaking down the miniest of Mavics. This is the Mavic Mini from DJI. It's honestly the smallest high-end drone that I've tested and this thing blows my mind. But what things do I hate? What things do I love? What things do you need to know before picking yourself up the Mavic Mini? Stay tuned and you'll find out very soon. So the first thing that you need to know about the Mavic Mini is that it's mini. Now the name is very obvious, it, it's a mini drone, it's tiny, this thing is ridiculously small. When it's folded up, it's smaller than my iPhone, it's smaller than most of the phones on the market, it's extremely lightweight, which means that it's extremely portable. So the first thing to mention is the actual carry case that you get with the Fly More Combo. Now I really love the Fly More Combo because it actually includes three batteries. So you get a little charging hub here and then you get this really nice case as well. And the case is actually beautiful. I've been extremely impressed with how portable it is and just the build quality on it. I've tested a lot of drones in my time and DJI have done a really good job with their packaging in the past, but this one is that next level. It's actually so well thought out. It's really secure in there. It also has a bit more space where I can actually put my little Osmo pocket there. So honestly, just a remarkable traveling case, which is why I really love the Fly More combo with the Mavic Mini. So I will actually have a link in the description below to check out the Amazon listing of the Mavic Mini. Uh, honestly, I always recommend the Fly More Combo purely because I am addicted to droning. As you can see, I have a clothing brand called Eye in the Sky Clothing, and I have a Flying Furious design which is inspired by the FPV community. But anyway, I digress. This drone right here has a 30 minute flight time, which is great, but when you're out there and you're flying, you probably only get about 25 minutes, and if it's really windy, maybe 22 minutes. So you want to make sure that you've got as much flight time as possible. You don't want to miss out on those crazy shots. So that's why I always recommend the Fly More Combo. So you get those additional batteries. So the Fly More Combo gives you the three batteries. Like I mentioned, the charging hub, which I actually really like the charging hub as well. It just fits nicely in there and keeps your batteries nice and secure. You've also got a battery indicator. So you can tap that power button once and you can see how all of the batteries are going. It charges relatively well. It's actually really quick charge time from what I've uh, kind of noticed about 30 to 40 minutes per battery. Uh, hard to kind of gauge what the other ones are, but normally they're about an hour or so for the larger batteries. So 30 to 40 minutes for the Mavic Mini batteries. And they're quite small. Again, it's quite a small drone. So without the battery, it's just a really lightweight chassis. Uh, very like plasticky to the touch. Uh, and even though it's built really well and it feels like a DJI drone, it is a little bit plasticky, which is kind of the trade-off of such a lightweight drone. Anyway, lift this little flap up and you'll notice it's probably the most flimsy flap I've ever seen on a drone and it really does worry me. But luckily the connection is actually a physical like clicking connection. So as you slot it in, it, it actually clicks in and it's it's, it's in there. You can't actually remove it unless you press that button in and pull it out. So worst comes to worst, if that flap actually comes off and you break it for some reason, that battery is not coming out. You physically have to press the button to pull it out. Also, the micro SD card slot is actually exposed without the flap being up. So that means quick and easy access to the micro SD card. Also, it does weigh 249 grams, so it's just underneath those regulations of a lot of countries where you have to have uh, some sort of you know, license or you have to register your drone if the drone's over 250 grams. So this little cutie is only 249 grams. So it comes in just underneath. I'm sure they'll change those rules at some point though, because this thing is very powerful. That's the thing you really need to know about it. It flies extremely well. It's very agile in the air and it handles the wind like a champion. So I've been really impressed with its performance overall. And I'm just going to kind of break down my experiences with it, how I have found the actual footage, how I found the flight experience, 
how I found even the controller. Just, I'm gonna try to break down everything so you guys know exactly what you're getting with this drone. So what I've actually really enjoyed doing with this drone is hand catching it and hand launching it. And it's ridiculously easy to do. The application has this big old fly button that you press and then hold it for a period of time until the ring fills and then you let go and the drone will start taking off. Really easy to take off. And then when you want to land, you basically press the land option, press and hold that landing button again, which is a big circle that goes around, and it will slowly come down. And because there are actual sensors here, if you have your hand underneath the drone, it will start taking off again. So what you need to do is you basically press and hold the land, it will slowly come down, and then you put your hand underneath. And that's actually how I've been using this drone predominantly. Like that's all I've been doing, just hand catching and hand launching. And it's been really easy, even though this is a very cheap kind of build to it because they've obviously had to cut down on the weight. It still feels like a DJI drone. When you hold it, yes, it feels a bit light and there are certain parts where you're kind of like, oh, it's a bit kind of cheap there. But overall, it's built really well. And the biggest thing I really loved about the actual Mini was how the folding mechanics work. It still feels like a heavy duty folding mechanism. It doesn't feel cheap and it doesn't feel like this is going to snap at any point. I was really impressed with the folding mechanisms. I was also really impressed with the camera itself. It shoots 2.7k at 30 frames per second and 1080p at 60 frames per second. It also has the three axis gimbal which the Spark did not have. It had that two axis gimbal and we were kind of wondering is the Mavic Mini going to have the three axis gimbal? Yes it does and it works really well. The camera's fantastic, the video quality is really nice and even the photo quality is really nice from this unit. So honestly for a beginner this is like that perfect point because it's not ridiculous, it's not 4K, you're not gonna fill up your hard drive with so much storage that you're like, uh, what am I gonna do with all this 4K footage? Like 2.7K is manageable. It's really easy to edit as well. And the 1080p at 60 frames per second is great for pretty much anyone. The one big thing though, is it only has a max bit rate of 40 megabits per second, where a lot of the other drones either have 60 or 100 megabits per second. So again, this is on the lower end of the scale, and it's definitely targeted more towards beginner drone operators. The controller works as you would imagine a DJI controller to work. It folds out from the base here. I really love how they've actually got like clips now for the thumbsticks. So they actually just come out and work nicely. I do love that black on black it's very clean and previously there were little metal tabs that were like silver basically. So that black is very elegant and it just kind of tucks away. And then the little clips work really well. You can actually hear it clips in and then you can fold it down into a tight little package. And the max range is four kilometers. You're not gonna want to go that far because you wanna keep your drone in line of sight. But four kilometers from such a small drone is really impressive. The other thing to know is that DJI have released another application. So they decided to go away from the DJI Go or the DJI Go 4 or even the Mimo, which had the Osmo Pocket and the Osmo Action. And they've created the DJI Fly. So they've got so many apps now. Please just streamline it, DJI. But anyway, they have the Fly application, which is very user-friendly. It feels at times like it's kind of targeting kids almost, like with the big buttons and just the simplified interface. It's very minimal, very easy to use. And the application is just a breeze to actually navigate, which is fantastic. And then when it comes to the features, you've basically just got video, photo, and then quick shot modes. The four quick shot modes that we get are Drony, Rocket, Helix, and Circle. So you actually get four of the better quick shot modes from DJI. Like I said, you don't get Active Track, you don't get Follow Me, but these four quick shot modes work really well and I've been impressed with them for the most part. They do kind of follow you, which is interesting, but there's no like active track, even though they definitely could have an active track in there, I believe. But because you don't have sensors on this, you only have the vision positioning sensors at the base here, which is actually what I was mentioning before. When you try to put your hand underneath it, the drone will actually lift up because it's trying to avoid hitting something below it. So it does have two sensors below. It does have a basic system, but no side sensors, no rear sensors, no front sensors. So like someone actually mentioned, it probably would be a little bit dangerous to have an active track mode, seeing as there is no real sensing going on. But that being said, you've just got to be smart when you're using active track. You know, you just stay above the tree line. You don't fly near like heavily populated areas. But seeing as this is targeted for, you know, beginners and, and kids, I guess you'd say, it does make sense they haven't done that. I feel at some point they might still add active track, maybe, because it would probably increase the sales. But 
For what you've got right here, it's a really good drone to actually start getting used to. And that's another good point that someone made on a, a forum that I'm part of, on a Facebook forum. They said that the reason they probably haven't done active track as well is just to help beginners actually get used to how to maneuver and how to control a drone. Because if we're relying on all these modes, then we're purely relying on them and we don't actually know how to maneuver and, and use the drone. So this means that we have to get used to those smooth shots. That means that we have to get ready to get away from, you know, a bird or a tree or whatever it may be. And that's actually really important for people to get used to and learn. So that was a really good point. And mentioning birds, the birds love this thing. It's so small and it doesn't really dominate in the air. So birds seem to have a lot of interest towards the Mavic Mini. So be mindful. They like your Mavic Mini. So for a beginner drone, the Mavic Mini is pretty much all you would need. You've got 2.7K, you've got 1080p at 60 frames per second, you've got that 30 minute battery life, you've got four quick shot modes, you've got photo options, video options, you've also just got a really reliable DJI drone that is super reliable in the air, it hovers really well. It actually handles wind really well, which I was impressed by. Such a small drone handling wind blows my mind because I've used a lot of cheaper drones and they just do not work well at all. But this actually holds its position. It works its ass off to hold its position, but honestly blows my mind how well it does in high winds. So I've really tested this. I've really put it through its paces and I can't floor it. You know, it's a, an affordable tiny drone. It's a foldable drone. Like it's so tiny, it folds away to nothing. Look at this thing. It's so small, it's literally just ridiculous. So for a starter, drone pilot for someone who wants to start out and wants to buy something but is maybe a little worried about it crashing or not being as reliable this is what you need this is reliable in the air it's got all of dji's safety and reliability checks that all of their other drones have it it just is so good obviously dji have done a lot of or spent a lot of money on research and development to ensure that it is the most stable flight with all their other previous drones and that's all built up to the point that they could release something of this caliber that only weighs 249 grams that has a 3-axis gimbal that can shoot 2.7 K has a 30 minute flight time which you probably only get 25 minutes but overall it's just it's really good so the Mavic Mini is a phenomenal drone that I would recommend to anyone wanting to buy a drone for the first time anyway thank you so much for watching let me know what you think in the comments below if you've got a Mavic Mini I'd love to read one of your comments I'd love to hear how you're going with it do you think they'll add active track in the near future let me know Anyway, have a fantastic day. Make sure to subscribe if you haven't already, and peace out.